as his father's studio manager, Nixo El Castrillo, acted as co-pilot to his father's artistic pursuits for many years. As studio manager, he handled the day-to-day -day aspects of the studio projects, including logistics, construction, mobilization, and coordination. Nixo's involvement and exposure to his father's sculptural discipline as well as his own architecture and management background, eventually led him to find his own artistic voice. His artistic style infuses color with architectural forms and tight compositions. These are nuances that the learned will understand as a departure from the specific and recognizable creations of his father. Since finding his artistic voice, Nixo has had five shows in 2017 including those at Gallery Joaquin, RCBC Museum, and Providence at the Fort. He also has upcoming work for the cities of Valenzuela, Noveleta, and Cahuit. I was exposed at a very, very young age. Dad would bring us some materials and then we'd work on it and they'd experiment. He wouldn't really teach us or guide us to do something. He would just give us a little insight on how to manipulate and how to use it and how to maximize it. And then from then on, he would leave us be. He would let us explore our innermost thoughts or our uh, personal experience and apply it to whatever medium we had in mind. I've been managing Dad's studio for more than 25 years and uh, I've been his personal bodyguard, his yaya, anything you name it, he and I have been through a lot. Uh, the reason why I like hanging around the studio because it's like when I was a little kid, I've always thought of what dad was doing even I was in school. And I would daydream a lot. I would daydream a lot. And sometimes I get into trouble because of that. When dad was uh, kind of sick already, uh, that's when I started helping out in terms of uh, his design and, and uh, executing some of his works. Of course, I wouldn't like to touch it. I would, I would really concentrate in... Uh, like the management side, the logistics, because I, I all know the key people whom to assign him with, and of course, the materials that he used. So from then on, as, as he got sick, that's when I stepped up the game and had a little more self-confidence. Being with him, it's like uh, that certain confidence, that certain feeling that you know you're, you really feel secure. There are times where then we, we'd experience heartaches and everything with, with a project that we had in mind. But it's, it's him who always lifts all our spirits up. You know, don't worry about it, kid. That's how it calls you. Don't worry about it, kid. Everything will be okay. Or we call, we'll call ourselves a dynamic duo. You know, he and I are also really into music. We would play a certain song, you know, just to hype ourselves up. Play a certain music that he likes. And he would start, you know, dancing a bit and everything. And he would feel confident, hey, it's going to be a beautiful day. It's going to be a good day. And so it's like that. It's just how we psych ourselves up. It's like a battle. We want people to know uh, what he has achieved and the magnitude of his talent also. Of course, when we create something, it all goes back to what he has established with us, the, the basic foundation, making God and country the priority of whatever we do. So those are the things that I believe that the family would like to carry on that he has started. Nixo's children, like those of Mieros, are also inclined towards the arts. Satina Brienne, or Sabine, who is nine, loves to express herself in many ways. Drawing, painting, and sculpting, as well as singing, dancing, and performing. Sorel, who is six, is also into drawing and painting. She also likes singing, dancing, and making videos. We will meet Castrillo's only daughter, Ovian, who will share with us her passion for the arts when my city my SM, my art, returns.